At the beginning in that flat, as I was moving into it, I was 21, I had two children. One was only a few weeks old and the other one would have been two. At first I was afraid because it was Ballymun and you hear all the stories about Ballymun. Anytime I'd walk through Ballymun you'd just see gangs of people sitting out on the steps drinking so I was a bit nervous. I'd moved from my mother so I had nothing other than the kids clothes. But I loved it when I moved in, it was like I made it into a home. It wasn't just a flat anymore, I was turning this place into a home by putting my own personal little things in, my personal little bits. Like I painted a lovely picture of a horse and cart on the wall in the daughter's room for it. And I had little stars sticking on the ceiling, you know, that glow in the dark. And it was lovely, it was real cosy, cosy. This was the two girls' room. They set up bump beds in the room for them, so they were in bump beds there in the room. And the next room I had it as a playroom for the children, so it was full of our toys. The kids loved this room because it was their room for them to be whoever they wanted to be. The first thing you'd hear was music because the children, one played violin, one played cello, and there was one who actually played the viola. The music was always constant, so you'd hear the sound of music floating through the flat. You'd hear it outside the door, you'd hear it outside the windows. So many bad things happened in it, but it was a lovely, cosy flat. It was a real home. So it wasn't just a house, it was a home. So moved in and it was grand for the first few weeks and then you start seeing what was going on in the block. You walk outside your door and you go to go down the stairs and it's just junkies from one end to the other. The smell of urine on the stairs. Then you start getting a bit frightened because the kids had to go in and out. So it was a lovely playground outside, gorgeous things in it. But I wouldn't let them go down to it unless I went with them. So my kids were brought up in a locked flat, they weren't allowed outside. She's grounded to protect her. I met this guy through a friend of mine where I was walking, it was her cousin. He'd hang around outside my job, I'd be coming out of work and he'd be there and me, I thought he was cool. So of course I was interested, like he's cool, I want to be cool as well. <laughs> and I should have known straight away, like people were saying to me, oh he's a scumbag and I'm like, ah he's alright. When I met him I already had a daughter. So to me he was great, he was taking on my child. I ended up having another three kids with him. He ended up going on drugs and got very abusive towards me and the kids. I tried to get rid of him, I had to get the police up. And when the police came up to get him out, he wouldn't leave, so they literally took him out and put him outside. I remember I had to work three jobs because he wasn't working, he was a lazy arsehole, he was under labour. Now, I was eight months pregnant at this time as well, doing all this, but I had to make sure there was money there for my kids. This particular day, I came home, I went up the stairs, and I got into the flat, and I just wanted to go to bed. I walked in, and my front room door was locked with a key, and I never lock any of my doors, I just have a thing about not locking doors. And I looked in, there was him and another six people sitting in my front room and they were all snorting heroin off him file in my front room. My kids were nowhere to be seen. So I says, where's the kids? He says, I think they're in there. So I went in one of them, she had locked herself in the bedroom and the others was out on the playground. Now this is eight o'clock in the night. 
So I went back up to the front room and I just literally got all that drugs off my table and I said, you all get out of here now. How fucking dare you sit in my home doing drugs where my children are, I said. So I tried to get him to leave. Of course, he wouldn't leave. This is my house. I said, nothing got to do with you, this isn't. I said, this is my flat. It's in my name. It's for me and my children, I said. As you're not welcome here, you get out of here now. But of course, I just got better around for saying that. My daughter, who was seven at the time, she was due to make her Holy Communion. She sat me down, she sat me down and told me. She said, Mammy, I remember, she said, walking into your bedroom. She said, I was three. She said, I wanted a drink. She says, and he was there and he had a knife up to your throat. She says, and I didn't know what to do. She says, I was afraid. She said, so I just went back into my room and cried myself to sleep. She says, I don't know, Ma. She says, why you put up with that? I stopped a gang of young kids on a stairwell who were sitting there drinking and smoking, doing drugs. And I asked them, why are you doing it? What makes you sit here and do that? So this is boredom. one particular day he came up I'm sitting in the flat and kicked the door in and came in and straight over gave me a punch in the face and my daughter she was four at the time went up in front of him and said you don't hit my mummy well he got her and just picked her and shoved her from one wall to the next when she fell to the ground he just got her to the next wall and I just went hysterical right back to them I backed him you can't hit me kids He eventually went out of the flat and came back and set fire to the flat then. It was like I said, I was just sitting there watching Teddy with the kids and we heard him banging at the door trying to get in. I said to myself, he won't get in because my dad had came up and put four locks on the outside of my hall door and on the inside I had five locks. So I'm sitting there and the kids are saying, well, mommy, he's kicking, he's kicking, he's banging, he's going to get in. I said, he's not going to get in, don't mind him, I said. I said, we'll sit here, we'll turn the telly up and just ignore him. I wasn't afraid, do you know what I mean? I felt sorry for the kids because I was like, God love them, they shouldn't have to hear this. So we're sitting there and it got quiet like. So my daughter says to me, I'll go and check and see, is he gone? I said, no, don't, I said, just leave. I says, I'll check, I said. She ran out ahead of me and went down to the hall. Mammy, mammy, she says, he's at the set in the flat on fire. She says, there's all fire at the door. I ran down to the end of the hall, threw the towel over the fire. So then I had to go and try to get something to lock up my letterbox in case he'd done her again. So then I went to the phone to ring my ma to tell her what had happened and he had cut my phone line off. I'm standing in the flat looking out of the window and I shouted down to someone I said, excuse me, I said, I said, could you call the police for me and ask them to come up and they gave them my address. They had me, I think, on speed dial at this stage, the police. <laughs> They came up, I told them what had happened, and there's nothing they could do. And from that day to this, I'm away from him now 14 years. 
He still tries to contact me, believe it or not. It is, and people to say, why does she stay? Not just particularly about me, but about other women that's in abusive relationships. And I understand why they stay. And I know it's a, it's a big thing of fear is one of them, but it's also admitting to the world that you've made a mistake. People say, yeah, but Rachel, you stayed and you had four children with them, or you had three children with them. Yeah, I had three children, they weren't all by choice. Do you know what I mean? I don't mean it was a mistake, I mean he raped me. My niece died when she was four. She had hydrocopolis. When she died, I realised what it meant to be a mother. It was like she came from heaven when she died and she shook me and says, Rachel, help my cousins get them away from that. She saved my children's lives. There's no defence for what he done to me or to my children. Even though I was stupid enough to allow what happened to me happen to me, I was never stupid enough to take drugs. It's really hard when you're surrounded by it because my daughter's 17. If I had to nail her into our bedroom, I would nail her into our bedroom. She'll do exactly what our father had done and I'm not going to have it. I says, I will literally kill you myself rather than let you go down that road. I'll get there in the end. I'll make sure she doesn't turn out the way he did. I think even when they take them flats down, it's not going to change what happens in Ballymun. You knock that building down and build that brand new building, build it of gold. The same thing will happen inside it, unless the community puts a stop to it. Educate yourself is the most important thing. Be a good person. Try to stay away from the bad influences in life. Everyone makes mistakes, learn from your mistakes. Don't just make another one after you've made that mistake. That's it.